As nearly the entire state of Texas prepares for a winter storm, how local and state officials are making sure utilities are prepared and what you need to know to get your family ready. A program designed to help lawbreakers get out of jail is now putting innocent people behind bars. Defenders investigator Tim Gerber joins us this morning to break down a necessary evil. A whole new meaning to man's best friend, a dog credited for saving lives during a brazen robbery. RJ Marquez breaks this one down in your morning headlines. A local school program is changing the way students think about food. Coming up, the impact is having in our community. Good morning, I'm Max Massey. We are here at the San Antonio Zoo. We have lizards, we have roaches, and we have easy ways that you can get back at your ex for a good cause. <laughs> good morning, Katie Science Lab is back on the road this Wednesday morning. We are at Thornton Elementary School getting ready to visit with a group of fifth graders that has been learning a lot about force, pressure, and energy. We're gonna put all of that to work this morning with our mini bottle rocket experiment. We'll see you in just a little bit. Thank you, Katie. Good morning. Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. All right, that's different. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday, February 2nd. We have a packed show ahead, but of course, the big story this morning, the potential for a winter storm in Texas, and apparently winter isn't over, at least for six more weeks after the groundhog saw his shadow this morning. We just tracked that this morning on the early edition. Our weather and traffic team closely monitoring everything, and uh, Stephen is standing by. Right now, let's go outside with a live cam. Calm before the storm. We've been here before, Justin. We know what to do, right? We do. And uh, let me preface all of this with saying that no, this is not going to be exactly like February of last year. That was much colder, longer duration. But we got to strike a balance here. This is still going to be dangerous in spots when we're talking about roadways and ice and that sort of thing. We're going to get you up to date on all that coming up here in just a bit. First, let's find out where that cold front is. Moving into the hill country as we speak, 42 in San Angelo. 36 Midland, 35 Abilene. It is 46 right now in Dallas. That cold air is spilling down the plains. And it will be in San Antonio by this evening. We are expecting that front sometime around dinner time. That's when you'll start to notice the changes. It's 57 right now here in town. There are watches and warnings across the state of Texas, and that does include our area. Winter storm warnings for the hill country. That's where we could see some ice accumulation of, of up to a tenth of an inch, up close to a quarter of an inch. And then winter weather advisories for San Antonio. That's where we could see some ice accumulation on bridges and overpasses, about a tenth of an inch at most. But even a little bit of ice causes issues. We know that. So we got to be very careful here. Radar shows that uh, things are all very light right now. We don't have a lot there, but we are expecting some showers uh, to develop this afternoon. Rain will pick up on the radar as that front gets a little bit closer. Pollen count is in. Mountain Cedars in the high category. It jumped back up today for whatever reason. It's at 850 and high. Molds are low at 270. Here is the timeline. So 65 this afternoon. Front comes through this evening. Rain chances pick up. Temperatures plummet. We're at 37 by 4 a.m. Close to freezing by 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. That's when we'll start to see that, see that switch over to some light freezing rain, which again could cause some issues on bridges and overpasses even here in San Antonio. We'll have much more on that, but one person that will be keeping a close eye on all that is Stephen Cavasso. Stephen, what do you have out there right now? Well, I do want to remind everyone, Justin, that Texas crews are going to be out there today spraying the roadways or highways, I should say, with brine. Uh, talking to them right now, they'll be doing that uh, probably right now, so we can expect to see those trucks out there. Remember to give them plenty of room to get the job done. Right now, though, be on the lookout. We do have some situations. US 90 at General McMullen, a crash that's cleared up there, but other crashes, we're seeing the same thing that uh, they seem to be clearing out. I-10 westbound at Bernie Stage Road, slight build up there, but that's quickly improving. Jump down over here. We're still seeing a slowdown off 410 uh, right here uh, where this crash is detected in the westbound lanes near Vance Jackson, but we're seeing that build up there in the eastbound lanes as well. Jump down over here does show a crash off US 90, the one you saw from Transguide uh, and the westbound lanes of General McMillan that's clearing out. One crash that's also cleared out 35 northbound at Division Avenue. Of course, we're going to continue to watch the roadways as the morning does go on and give you all those updates, especially in the days ahead. Mark, Sarah. Steve, thank you. Local and state officials are reminding you now is the time to make any preparations for the freezing temperatures ahead. CPS Energy says they are already planning to go into conservation mode at their headquarters downtown later on tonight, but they say it's only as a precaution. Right now, they're focused on a particular 24-hour period 
That's tomorrow afternoon to Friday afternoon. ERCOT says they are prepared. They predict it will still have 15,000 megawatts available if that peak arrives Friday morning. CPS Energy says all power plants will be up and running to help, and they've already taken precautions to keep their plants weatherized. CPS Energy is also keeping an eye on windy conditions, would, could, which could also lead to power outages. And SAW says it's taking precautions to protect pipes to keep water service functional, but the company is also warning customers if you had pipe problems last year when it froze in February, it's likely to happen again this year. So they're reminding people to cover and insulate any pipes that are exposed. Bear County also opened several warming centers ahead of the freeze. The, some of those locations, uh, 2096 Tally Road, 23,103 Bulverde Road, and 6427 Evers Road. They will open at 7 p.m. tonight through 12 p.m. on Saturday. We have a full list of those warming centers over on KSAT.com. As we know, weather can change quickly, meaning this situation could evolve over the coming hours. Make sure to download the free Weather Authority app to keep eyes on the temperatures and any icy weather. We'll have important updates for you right there anytime. Well, there is other news. We'll get back to weather coming up in your morning headlines. A shooting at a campus ends with the deaths of two officers and a manhunt for a man near campus a dramatic video of three young deputies saving the lives of two people from a burning building plus a store manager credits his dog for saving his life during a would-be robbery and it's all caught on camera RJ Marquez joins us now with those stories and more. Good morning, RJ. Yeah, good morning, guys. This dog's springing into action, and we actually have that uh, surveillance video from that store, so we'll show that to you guys here in just a little bit. But uh, started in Virginia this morning, where officials there are looking for a motive after a man walked onto a college campus and shot and killed two police officers. So this all happened on the campus of Bridgewater College. The two officers responded to a call for a suspicious man near a campus building, and after a short interaction, the suspect shot the officer and then ran away. Several agencies you can see right there responded to the search for this suspect and a man fitting his description was spotted nearby off campus. Officers went in after him in knee deep water and took him into custody about 30 minutes later. Students and staff were on edge for hours. They had to shelter in place until the scene was clear. One student said that she had just made coffee for one of the officers on Monday. We had a short conversation, but I didn't know much about him, but I'm so upset that he he really died today. Oh my God. I'm still trying to figure out my emotions towards it. Yeah, and that college identifying the officers this morning as JJ Jefferson and John Painter. The suspect was identified as 27 year old Alexander Wyatt Campbell. You see him right there. He faces several charges, including capital murder. Authorities still trying to figure out if Campbell had any connection to that college. Now to a dramatic rescue of two people and a dog trapped in a burning home near Chicago, and it was all caught on police body cameras. You could see this dramatic video right there behind me. So this video showing three deputies respond to a burning townhouse complex early Monday morning with people trapped upstairs. The deputy said they ran to the screams and within 15 seconds, a victim jumped for her life and one of the deputies had to catch her and break her fall. You can see that's why that video looks shaky. Then look at this right here. That's the second victim who just jumped from 20 feet as well. The body cam of a third member of that team shows the officers hustling the victims away before the building before just a backdraft causes the building to erupt. Those deputies saying that they were just doing their job. We both knew at that point that this was a life or death situation. I mean, they were, they were either going to burn alive in there or whether we get there before the fire department or not um, basically becomes irrelevant in our minds because uh, we're going to save some lives. And those victims were later reunited with their dog. You see the video right there that they actually tossed out the window first before they jumped out and all three are expected to be OK. That's good news. And of course, those hero deputies doing a great job. OK, now from one dog being rescued to another that jumped into action during a to help rescue a clerk during a shootout at a corner store. Check this surveillance video out. Security video shows the moments that these two would be robbers rushed into the store in Philadelphia early Tuesday morning. The store manager said one suspect pointed a gun at his clerk's head right then. You can see this dog right there jump into action. Their jumped all, their dog jumped all over the suspect, distracting him and giving the clerk a split second to take out her own gun and start shooting at that man. That suspect started to run away, but the other suspect started shooting back at that clerk wound her before both of them ended up taking off the store manager this morning crediting that dog for saving their lives. If he don't move the guy and grumble him, he will shoot the girl before she shoot him. He did help. 
He saved her life. He saved my life and her life. All right, no arrests have been made, but police did recover a weapon left behind by one of the suspects. And again, that clerk is expected to recover. And you can see that dog right there, guys. It actually, not making this up, the dog's name is Bullet. Bullet. So Bullet. <laughs> so hopefully Bullet is getting some good treats and snacks today and just getting a lot of love for helping those people out in that situation. Hope so. Yeah. Definitely. Definition of a good dog. There we go. Yeah. Thank you, RJ. Thanks, guys. Each year, one in four deaths caused by heart disease, according to the CDC. And during American Heart Month, we're taking a look at a local program offering healthy recipes to students and families. So the Culinary Health Education for Families program, or known as CHEF, is teaching students and families basic nutrition and practical cooking skills. And it has now expanded to more school campuses this year. That's right. Tiffany Huertas joins us live from Japheth Academy with more. Tiffany, tell us more about how this program and how it's helping students. Good morning, Mark and Sarah. This morning, we're taking a look. Just check it out. They, this is what they're going to be making in the classroom, and now they're aligning this with the menus here in the cafeteria, and the program is helping build confidence in the kitchen. Students are learning food safety, preparation, and nutrition. We have Jenny with the district and Raquel with Chef San Antonio. Good morning. Jenny, let's start with um, this program. How is it impacting students? So it's, we're so lucky to have the opportunity to work with the CHEF program. And so our students are exposed to not only nutrition education, but culinary demonstrations. And we're just so excited and proud to be able to bring that into our kitchens and offer the same recipes to our students. And this morning, they're preparing the food that the students will be eating for, for lunch? lunch today. Yeah, and today we have a uh, Fiesta corn salad. So very excited and, uh, you know, the exposure of fresh fruits and vegetables for our students. So. And talk to us about, you have some pictures here of these programs all over the community, right? Yeah. So CHEF, which is a culinary health education program for, for students, um, is rooted in a very important mission. We believe that food is medicine. So it's important, especially during these times, correct, that we share health education with students here throughout the district. Uh, we have wonderful programs where we are teaching an eight-week curriculum called Chef Bites. Um, and we, we partner with school districts like SAISD to offer the program to students in over 60 elementary schools and academies, over 20,000 students um, in the district. And we also partner with other groups throughout the city, uh, community organizations like the Boys and Girls Club, the San Antonio Botanical Gardens, and other school districts outside of San Antonio ISD. And during the pandemic, was there any challenges? Did you all have to hold off on these programs? Actually, um, quite the opposite happened. Um, as I mentioned, especially during the pandemic, it's important that family, we can keep families and children safe and healthy. And so we provided virtual classes. We also provided meal kits with our partnership through the San Antonio Food Bank. Um, so it was a wonderful way for us to continue the work that we were doing and help children and families here in San Antonio. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. And this food is so delicious and it's so colorful. And do you think the students are going to like this food? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, we have uh, the corn, and then we have our fresh cilantro um, mayonnaise that's uh, seasoned. You know, typically like a corn on the cob, uh, like Miss Jenny said, the fiesta uh, corn. You have your mayonnaise, your chili powder, uh, your salt, your pepper. Uh, we also have a little bit of lime juice in here just to brighten up all the flavors and uh, completely round out the the corn salad. And it makes it fun for, for the students to learn this type of food? Yes, ma'am. Uh, so with the chef program, what happens is, uh, you know, child nutrition, uh, the chef program, they make it in their PE class. They get to learn about the nutrition. They see it made. Uh, and then they come through the line and they get to see it, they get to smell it, and most importantly, they get to taste it. Um, and it just rounds out the entire experience of uh, nutrition. Uh, Awesome. Well, thank you so much for showing us this morning. We're going to have more coming up on the noon show. Back to you guys in the studio. Thank you, Tiffany. A healthy corn cup out there. 912, about 58 degrees still ahead on GMSA at 9. The case at Defenders shedding new light on a program meant to help people stay out of jail. Instead, it's doing the exact opposite. Tim Gerber explains. But first, if you're looking for a way to disgrace your ex this upcoming Valentine's Day, the zoo has the answer. Max has details coming up in a live report. And later, Katie and David live inside a fifth grade classroom at Thornton hey. Elementary for another science lab on the road. Uh, Valentine's Day is coming up. It's going to be a day of love or a day of spite.
so you can get back at your ex on Valentine's Day with Cry Me a Cockroach fundraiser from the San Antonio Zoo. That's right. We talked about this about a week or so ago, but the magical day is getting closer. And Max <laughs> Massey joins us live from the San Antonio Zoo on how people can get involved and hopefully work through some emotional issues, Max. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, guys, we don't need to know the details of those past relationships. What we do need to know is how many roaches you want to donate for. So take a look. Joined here with Craig now. So, Craig, explain to us, introduce us to some of the roaches that will be food to me. These are some of our dubia roaches, and they are a fine diet item for many of our reptiles, birds, as well as some of our small mammals. Very high in protein. Mm. Excellent menu item. Delicious. All right, so... <laughs> Craig, thank you. So we're going to see Craig, you know, introduce us to the protein. But I want to introduce you to my new friend. This is Blue, my boy Blue. Now, Blue's not going to be eating any of the cockroaches, but he is going to be here for our vegan option. Yes, for this year's fundraiser, there is a vegan option. Not only can you donate for the cockroaches and for the frozen rats, you can donate for vegetables. So my boy Blue here can get a healthy and nutritious meal. Join here with Kyle. So, Kyle... What is the fundraiser for and how's it going so far? So we are in our third year of the Crime and Cockroach fundraiser and everything we do here is to secure a future for wildlife. So this is just another creative way that we're getting people engaged and involved in order to get behind that vision for San Antonio Zoo. All right, so third year, how have the last couple of years gone and what do you expect this year? Yeah, so we have fed in total over 8,000 roaches um, in the lifespan of Crimea cockroach. And this year is going better than ever. So we're really excited to do this fundraiser and really secure a future for wildlife in doing so. Okay, and it's not just people in San Antonio donating, right? No, this is international. So we see every single year over 30 countries that donate um, and then all 50 states. So everybody gets involved. And if you want to get involved, you can just go to sazoo.org where you can then uh, get yourself a cockroach or something for our vegans as well. All right, Kyle, thank you so much. I want to wave goodbye to these cockroaches. Sarah, Mark, do you guys want me to bring you back a couple? Can you pick one up? Like, I just want you to see one. I want to see you hold one, Max. Do it. I don't think Do I want to see me hold one. <laughs> Do you know, it. I'll bring one back for you, Sarah, and you can take a selfie and post it on Instagram for it. Can't wait, you Max. You don't have to, but notice nobody <laughs> has stepped up and named a cockroach after next. Yep. Nope. Not oh. going to happen on the air. <laughs> Lips are sealed. Yes, they are. <laughs> Thank you, Max. Thank you, Max. We're all <laughs> creeped out now. Yeah, but it's not you. It's us. 918 <laughs> about 58 degrees. Justin, a lot going on for tomorrow. It's uh, it's about to get busy. We're, we're going to see some precipitation around here, and the concern that we have now is that the precipitation is going to linger a little bit longer behind this front. So there could be maybe a little bit more icing still uh, here in San Antonio. We're just going to be talking about bridges and overpasses and mainly the northern half of Bear County, but we'll get to that here in just a second. First, let's start with where this front is. It is located just to our north. Behind it, there is some much colder air, 27 Lubbock, 19 Amarillo, 31, in Wichita Falls out ahead of it. Still warm and humid. We've got the fog this morning to prove it, 57 here in San Antonio right now. And as you look at the radar, snow already flying across parts of the Texas Panhandle and then rain just behind the front. This is what we have to look forward to. This will shift south as we get into uh, later today and then tonight and tomorrow. We do have winter storm warnings in effect for the whole country from 3 a.m. to 6 p.m. That means ice accumulation up uh, from a tenth of an inch to a quarter of an inch. Wind chill values zero to 10 degrees. Winter weather advisories in effect for San Antonio, Seguin, Hondo, Uvalde, along the, uh, the Highway 90 corridor. Ice accumulations on bridges and overpasses, and we're talking wind chills five to 15. It is going to get cold. The radar right now doesn't show us much. Everything we're seeing is pretty light, but I do expect that this will pick up later today. There's a look at the visibility. We do got to check in on the fog. About, uh, down to about half a mile here in town, mile and three quarters in New Braunfels. Rock Springs about half a mile. So the fog is fairly widespread this morning. And you can see that here on live camp. 57 degrees at the airport, 62 stints and 60 at Kelly. 56 right now in Randolph. Temperatures in the 50s and 60s, so it's still mild right now. And temperatures will make their way into the mid 60s this afternoon before that cold air plunges in here. You can see it's already cold near in Ozona. I was about to say Arizona. Ozona, uh, 45 degrees there. And uh, it's just uh, spilling south now. By 6 p.m., the front is on our doorstep here in San Antonio. And you start to see some of that precipitation behind the front. Then it really starts to build in around midnight. We have some pretty good chances of rain here, a cold rain. 
And then you see this pink color that represents freezing rain starts to develop in the hill country, Fredericksburg to Rock Springs again around midnight. And then by 6 a.m. All of the hill country is now seeing freezing rain. So then the roads will start to become a bit icy here in San Antonio. That freezing rain's just starting to move in by 6, 7 a.m. tomorrow morning and then pushing south through the day by 10 a.m. spreading over the city of San Antonio and we'll just have to watch the bridges and overpasses around town, especially those flyovers as the temperatures continue to fall. Even around 3 p.m. there is still some precipitation here on the map before everything clears out uh, late tomorrow night and uh, we're just left with some cloud cover and some very, very cold temperatures. Let's take a look at ice accumulations here, and this is just an estimate, but again, up to a quarter of an inch in the hill country, and that's where we could really see some issues here in San Antonio, Hondo, Uvalde, up to a tenth of an inch of ice. But even a little bit can do damage. When you're talking less than a tenth of an inch, it's minor impacts, bridges may get slick. That's what we're looking for here in San Antonio. Hill country, icy roads and bridges, and some light ice on trees. We'll be tracking all of that. The other side to this is the cold air. Hill country 50 to 60 hours below freezing once we get there tonight here in San Antonio 24 to 30 hours below freezing through uh, Friday into Saturday and then uh, down south 10 to 15 hours. So this is going to be uh, again not like last February, but we are going to have a length of time here uh, where it is below freezing wind chill forecast Thursday morning tomorrow morning wind chills will be in the 20s single digits in the hill country and then we fast forward to Friday. The wind chill is going to be in the single digits here in San Antonio, close to zero in the hill country, just to give you an idea of just how cold this air is. So here's the timeline 44 by 10 o'clock. That's when the temperature drops. Decent chances of rain, especially through tomorrow morning, switching over to freezing rain by 10 a.m. here in town. 32, 30 by 4 p.m., still with some lingering chances. The extended forecast 39 Friday, 45 Saturday it does warm up, but notice those lows Friday, Saturday morning back down into the 20s before we finally do see some warming by uh, the weekend and early next week, guys. All right, it's a lot to digest, but important folks spread the word. Be careful out there as we go into tonight and tomorrow. And of course, we'll pass along anything like school closures as soon as we get them. Absolutely. All right, Katie and David, they're getting things ready for another science lab on the road. Details on what today's experiment involves. Katie and David back on the road this morning, this time at a Northside ISD school with a fifth grade class at Thornton Elementary. So guys, what's today's experiment? <laughs> Good morning. All right, today we are doing one of my favorite experiments. David and I did this over a year ago back at the station. Um, and today we are making mini bottle rockets out of film canisters in the ingredient list here is super simple. You just need film canisters like this that have a removable lid. We found these on Amazon. Great buy, David. Maybe you had some from back in the day you could have wow, let us yeah, use, but um, more at home. Yeah. But uh, anyway, <laughs> we found these on Amazon. We've got some Alka-Seltzer tablets and also some water. So today. Oh, wait, look, look, Mark. And so look, look what, the, look what I got. I came to a science class and got a beaker for my water. Mm -hmm. You can't, can't beat that. Now that's <laughs> real science right there. So, it'll be a real experience. We're really happy for you. Thank We're you. really happy I'm for excited. you. excited. <laughs> anyway, yes, we are at uh, Miss Johnson's fifth grade class today. And she told me that they've been learning a lot about pressure, force, and energy. And this activity is a great way to look at all those different things, um, especially pressure, because with our Alka-Seltzer and our water reacting, making carbonation inside our little canister, that creates pressure, and the pressure is what's going to make our little film canister turn into a little bottle rocket and lift up off of the table. We've also got different types of energy at work here, potential energy, so stored energy. So before our film canister lifts off, it's got potential stored energy, but once it's put into motion, we can see the kinetic energy at work. So we've got a lot of cool stuff going on. We're going to start to get our activity prep. So everyone has their canister, and their Alka-Seltzer. And what we're gonna do to get ready is everyone's gonna pour some water into their canister about halfway up. So you guys pass those cups of water around and do that. Um, and Mark and Sarah, once we come back in just a few minutes, 
We're going to drop our Alka-Seltzer in our film canisters and we're gonna see our mini bottle rockets put into action. That's coming up in just a few minutes right after the break, we'll be right back. All right, welcome back. Good morning. We are back at Thornton Elementary School with Miss Johnson's fifth grade class, getting ready to put our mini bottle rocket activity into motion. You guys, I'm going to demonstrate what we're going to do here. So you're going to put your Alka-Seltzer in. You're going to turn it over. Let's see. Let's try a whole one and see what. Let's see. That's going to be hard for that lid to come off of it. I know. Woo! <laughs> Okay, but see this one kind of tipped over. This one kind of tipped over, so that may happen. If that happens, we'll help you start over. All right, so we're gonna go table by table. Let's start over here. Start with you two guys, right? Here. Yes, so are you ready? Go ahead. So remember what we're gonna do, and everybody has goggles on because this is kind of a projectile. So you're gonna put your Alka-Seltzer in, quickly put the lid on, flip it over, put it kind of in the middle of the table, and then back away. move back. Ready, there you go. There you go. Let's do that. Oh. Okay. All right. What happened? We didn't. We didn't get it. We didn't get the lid on tied up, right? Whoa! <laughs> that one worked well. What'd you think? Nice. Nice, huh? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Give it another try. Fire away, so to speak. Oh, I want that too. That's right. It's gonna leak a little bit. Uh-oh. 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 Hey! Look at this. It's going great. Okay, you guys ready to go? Let's fire up. I think I, you can probably do this whole table together. Y'all go ahead. We got, we got a couple of minutes, so we want to get everybody in there. So there you go. Put them in there. Uh-oh. All right. All right, y'all ready? Hey! Y'all ready over here? All right, load them up. Uh, just, just the one half. <laughs> I'm back behind you. I don't want to get hurt. No, you're good. What do you think? It fell. It kind of fell over, didn't it? So what does that tell you? No, I put too much. Put too much. Oh, the stuff in there, or you didn't get the lid on there tight enough. I didn't right? get the lid on there tight enough. So what happens if the lid's not on there tight? The pressure doesn't build up as much. The pressure doesn't build up right. All right, who's All right, next? Here we go. Well, go ahead over here. Go ahead. You already? Did you go already? No. Oh. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That one, that one that's it's it's gonna go. Wait that for it. Go. It's gonna go. Wait for it. It's gonna go. Is it though? Wait for it. <laughs> All right, you guys get set. <laughs> you guys get ready over here. <laughs> we we got a, we got about a little over a minute to go. All right, you guys, it's your turn. Go, go for gold. I don't know what happened to that. <laughs> there it went. <laughs> Did it get? <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh oh. <laughs> okay. Oh, we went back in the back. We got them going everywhere. Let's see. It's going. It's getting ready to go, huh? It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Watch it. So we gotta get this one before we wrap. We gotta get this one. Wait on you. Yeah. Mark and Sarah, we're okay. not coming back to you till we get to the ceiling. There we go. Boom! That was off the ceiling. Woohoo! That one hit the ceiling. That one <laughs> all off right. The ceiling. All right. All right. Well, uh, did we, did we damage this? We, we got a lot. We got a lot going on in this show today, so I wow. won't, I won't you, stress uh, producer Dylan out. And we'll uh, we'll send it back to you guys. Waiting on this one. Anyway, this was a lot of fun. Thank you to Miss Johnson's class for having us today. We'll keep we'll keep doing this a little more. We're gonna send it back to our friends at KSAT. Everybody wave.
All right. Bye. Stay warm tomorrow. <laughs> a room full of goggles, and for good reason. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. We had projectiles <laughs> today at Thornton <laughs> Elementary. Thank you, David. Thank you, Katie. I think David had more fun than the kids. <laughs> Let's go outside with Live Cam. If just now tuning in, a lot's Ooh. changed to the forecast. Uh, some enhancements, perhaps. Here's Justin with more on the fog now and the freeze later. Yeah, so you see there uh, right now we've got fog out there. It's, it's rather thick in spots. Uh, we'll see that lift next couple of hours. Still a lot of clouds, some chances of rain later today. And of course, all eyes on that cold front. Where is it now? It's sitting up across parts of the hill country behind it. Already seen quite a bit of precipitation, some snow up there in the Texas Panhandle, a little bit of a mix across north central Texas and then rain south of that. We expect that the rain will pick up quite a bit tonight. We do have winter storm warnings in effect for the hill country. What does that mean? Ice accumulation of from uh, from a tenth of an inch up to a quarter of an inch. Wind chill value zero to 10 degrees. Winter weather advisory is now in effect. That does include San Antonio, Seguin, Hondo, Uvalde. This is where we should see some light ice accumulation, maybe up to a tenth of an inch, and that means bridges and overpasses could become slick, especially on the north side of Bear County. Temperatures right now 57 degrees at the airport, 52 Kerrville, 58 in Hondo. Still some 60s down to the south of Catula and Beeville. Here is the timeline. 40% chance of rain this afternoon, 65, but it turns much colder. That front expected by 6 p.m. this evening. Then it turns windy and much colder. 60 to 80% chance of rain overnight, but temperatures plummet. By tomorrow morning here in San Antonio, we could be near freezing. And that means a chance for freezing rain, a decent chance, 10 a.m., and then some lingering uh, chances through the afternoon before this all clears out. We're going to have much more on this and uh, look at uh, some of the updates coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. Taking a look outside at Transguide I-35 at South Cross. It looks there like there is a backup on the frontage road there. Can't tell if it's because of a possible ramp closure or a lane closure on that frontage road. Looks like construction. The barrels are up and there's heavy equipment in the median there. We'll keep an eye on that situation. Well, they charged her for a crime she knew she did not commit. And despite years of pressure from county prosecutors, the San Antonio mother refused to plead guilty. So how did she end up in the situation? October 2nd, 2017 is the day Ruby Sandoval's world turned upside down. <laughs> the day deputies with the Bear County Sheriff's Office Narcotics Unit raided her home. I just see them running up on the the rest of them running behind them. And I'm like, and they're just going straight to the back room. And they go, OK, it's right here. It's right here. And then they pick me up, and put cuffs on me and sit me on the couch, which was right in front of that window. But she says what came next simply left her stunned. Then they come out and they're just hold, like I said, they're just holding up that that big bag. And yeah, I had to take a big breath. Yeah, kind of. Ruby was in big trouble because that bag contained more than two pounds of methamphetamine over a thousand grams, making her look like a drug trafficker. All right, so it turns out she had been framed by a secret informant working with the Bear County Sheriff's Office. And now investigative reporter Tim Gerber is here with us with more on his one hour special, Necessary Evil, the cost of confidential informants. Now, Tim, you found the same informant and also framed at least three other people, same exact way, right? Yeah, so this all happened in 2017. The informant was arrested in July and charged with uh, possession of methamphetamine with intent to deliver. He ended up getting an offer from the prosecutors at the Bear County uh, District Attorney's Office that if he would work for them and become an informant and provide two more cases about the similar amount of drugs, they would drop his cases. So. They used him as an informant, and this was the first time they were using him. So the folks that you see here, th this was another house right before Ruby Sandoval, who we just showed a couple weeks before her arrest. These folks at West Hermosa were arrested, and it turned out that right before the Bear County Sheriff's Office raided the home, a man uh, had shown up to the house with a little girl in a backpack. They went and used the bathroom. When they came back, the backpack wasn't there. A few minutes later, the sheriff's office comes and raids and they find two pounds of methamphetamine hidden in the bathroom. And it was very similar to what happened to Ruby. However, 
The same man who was working as an informant who knew her asked her to hold some items because he was getting kicked out of his house and had a box and said, hey, can you store this for a while? And he comes over with this little girl and she stores the box. And, you know, the next day he's sending her text messages saying, do you still have my box? Can I come pick it up? And it was those text messages that really unraveled this whole thing that showed that this guy was setting up people. So not only her, but those three people there. And they ended up having to go back and redo all these cases. And they dismissed them and found that these folks were actually innocent. So, Tim, I know you've been working on this project for about three years. A yeah. lot went into it. I know you interviewed Bear County Sheriff Salazar and the DA. So what did they have to say about all this? So the district attorney's office is learning some lessons from this. They say they are using this case as a as a lesson and, and teaching their prosecutors. You know, this is some of the things that uh, can happen here. We really need to listen to people when they're bringing these types of things up. And they're being more cautious in how they use confidential informants and who they're providing these contracts with. And, you know, they, they seem to have learned a lesson from all of this. They're also going back and looking at some of the drug cases over the past 10 years to make sure there aren't similar cases. But they have found a fifth case related to this same informant in going looking at all this. Now, the sheriff's office says they have done nothing wrong. They don't feel any of the deputies involved did anything wrong here. So they say that, you know, they have really reorganized. They're no longer using a narcotics unit. It all falls under an organized crime task force. And they're relying more on intelligence than information from informants, but they say informants are something that are always going to be part of law enforcement. You bet. All right, Tim, we have about 30 seconds yeah. left. Turns out these sort of problems are widespread. What did experts say about this? It is something that is happening every day in every jurisdiction. And the problem is we really don't know how many crimes these informants are actually solving. We don't know how many crimes law enforcement are letting these informants continue to commit while they're setting other people up for, for charges. So there's not really any good tracking here. We need better tracking and we need better uh, resources for there to be like a, a hearing with these informants prior to signing a, a warrant to let them go in to, to raid a home to really make sure that this informant is telling the truth before someone ends up getting put in jail when they're innocent. Tim, thank you so much. I know a lot of hard work. This was a team effort with you guys. Yeah. Um, so if viewers, if you didn't get to watch it last night at nine, you can watch it right now, the full thing on KSAT.com. Tim, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me, guys. Good seeing you, sir. 943, about 58 degrees. You are watching GMSA at nine. All right, the conditions are quickly changing outside. You can see that fog that Justin's been talking about. It is here. What we can expect for the rest of the day and tomorrow. 947, welcome back to GMSA at 9. A whole lot of people tuning in right now going, what's going on with the weather, Justin? Yeah, I see yeah. the fog has rolled in. The fog's here. That's kind of the, the first thing we're going to have to deal with today. Uh, but you do want to get your preps done today, prepping for the cold weather. We, weather, we got to think about the four P's, pipes, plants, pets, and people, of course. Uh, if you have uh, pipes that are exposed, you want to go ahead and cover them. Temperatures are going to get really cold uh, as we get into Friday morning, especially. So that's kind of a time frame that we want to watch. Uh, and so today is the day to do it because uh, temperatures are going to plummet by the time we get into this evening. 58 degrees right now, dealing with some fog out there. Northerly winds at around five miles per hour and just some light drizzly stuff. The satellite picture shows we've got a lot of clouds. We're socked in at this point. Temperatures 58 degrees at the airport, some low 50s in Kerrville and Fredericksburg. The cold air is not to the hill country yet, but it will be a little bit later today and then eventually working its way through San Antonio. Visibility, it's down to about a tenth of a mile in some spots, including here around San Antonio, New Braunfels, three quarters of a mile, Kerrville, one and three quarters mile there. So it, it, there is uh, going to be some thick fog. I think most of that lifts next couple of hours. We're still going to be left with clouds, though, and then the potential for some showers. Seeing a few showers now out towards uh, Lakey, up towards Rock Springs, and then you run into some better rain north of our area. And beyond that, you deal with some wintry weather in the Texas Hilka, uh, the Texas Panhandle, I should say, in north central Texas. And if you're headed north, it, it becomes a mess later tonight. Places like Dallas are going to be dealing with quite a bit of ice. The Texas Panhandle, as we just mentioned, dealing with snow. So it's, it's not good travel weather across the state for sure. Temperatures 31 in Wichita Falls, 27 in Lubbock, 19 in Amarillo. That cold air spilling south as we speak. And that front, again, we think it'll be here in San Antonio around 6 p.m. or so tonight. There are watches and warnings in place. Winter storm warning. 
uh, for the Hill Country. This goes from 3 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Thursday. Ice accumulations from a tenth of an inch to a quarter of an inch. Wind chill values 0 to 10. It is going to get bitter cold. Uh, winter weather advisories for San Antonio in areas along Highway 90 and out towards Seguin. This is Thursday, 3 a.m. to 6 p.m. And this is where we can see some light accumulation of bridges and overpasses. They will become slick. Wind chills 5 to 15. Let's take a look at the forecast here. And timing is everything, right? Uh, as we look at 6 p.m., here comes the front. We will get some showers, maybe a couple of rumbles of thunder. I can't even rule that out as this front comes through, but mainly just some rain. This is around midnight. Seeing some uh, cold rain moving in here around San Antonio and notice the pink color that represents freezing rain and sleet, mainly freezing rain, I think initially, Fredericksburg to Rock Springs. This spreads in across the entire hill country by sunrise tomorrow. And so the hill country will be the first to see things deteriorate. As we get uh, into San Antonio, that line gets into San Antonio again around 6, 7 o'clock, starts to push south by 10 a.m. I think temperatures at the airport probably near freezing by 10 a.m. And that's when we have to worry about things here in town. Bridges and overpasses, there will be some slick spots, I think, as the precip precipitation continues into the afternoon. This is 3 p.m. And I mentioned timing. The fact that this is hanging around just a little bit longer allows for that cold air to get in here. And the, the mix of those two things, not good. By midnight, everything is pushing south towards the coast. So here's what to think about. Uh, here's something to think about. Less than a tenth of an inch of ice, minor impacts, bridges may get slick. When we're talking about uh, the hill country, which is where I think we'll see up to a quarter of an inch of ice, bridges and overpasses, and then you start to see that on the trees and things like that. Uh, travel is obviously not encouraged by tomorrow afternoon, especially as you go north of San Antonio. Uh, as far as the cold air, 50 to 60 hours below freezing possible in the hill country. So that's uh, that'll be a problem. And then 24 to 30 hours here in San Antonio. And that's why we have to think about the pipes and those sort of things with that extended length of time below freezing. And then to the south, 10 to 15 hours in temperatures by uh, Friday morning are going to be in the low 20s. Wind chill values, this is tomorrow morning around 9 a.m. It'll feel like 20 here in town, single digits in the hill country. And then by Friday morning, it'll feel like it's in the single digits here, close to zero in the hill country, just to give you some perspective. So this is pretty cold air. Here is the timeline. 44 degrees, 10 o'clock, 60% chance of rain, 80% chance of rain at 4 a.m. and windy, 37. And then close to freezing by 10 a.m., 70% chance of rain mixing with freezing rain. And then things starting to taper off by the time we get to 4 p.m. There could be a little bit of sleep mixed in there, too. The extended forecast, 23 Friday morning, 23 Saturday morning. Temperatures finally do warm up some, 46 on Saturday, 54 on Sunday with sunny skies. We'll be right back. Stuff slowdowns out there. 35 at South Cross looked like some construction earlier. We looks like we do have several vehicles out there right now diverting traffic. So just be aware we've got some problems. Oh, actually, that's 10 at Dominion. Yeah. Whole different area. Whole area. Sorry about that. Didn't see that one. I and there was no time for me to look it up. So I apologize. No info. Justin. All right, uh, here is the forecast. Uh, we'll be in the mid 60s today. Chance of some showers this afternoon, but rain chances pick up tonight. Then we're concerned about a little bit of freezing rain coming in tomorrow. Winter weather advisories in effect for San Antonio. Keep it on KSAT and KSAT.com for the foreseeable future. We'll be back. See you in the